Welcome back. As the debate over immigration and the shutdown demonstrate, President Trump is walled in between his Republican base and the Democratic opposition, neither of whom want to give anything to the other side. One group that may have a lot of impact on Mr. Trump's fate on everything from the shutdown to Mueller to 2020 are House Republicans. And joining me this morning is the chair of the House Republican Conference. That's the number three position in leadership on the Republican side. It's Liz Cheney of Wyoming. Congresswoman Cheney, welcome to Meet the Press. Thank you very much, Chuck. Great to be with you. Let me start with the shutdown. Wyoming, uh, as folks are going to see, is one of the most impacted states by this shutdown. I think one of the five most impacted outside of the region here. The president's proposal seemed to inch Democrats are talking about more money for border security, but no barrier. Are we closer or is this rhetoric? Well, it's certainly more than rhetoric on, on our side. And I think that what you saw the president do yesterday was one more time put a proposal on the table. You know, it's, it's very difficult to understand uh, when you've got the president's proposal that obviously includes money for the border wall, also includes an extension for the DACA folks, also includes an extension for TPS. You know, th those are issues, DACA in particular, that Speaker Pelosi, she commandeered the floor of the House of Representatives for eight hours less than a year ago um, on, on particularly this issue of helping to ensure that, that people that are here, the so-called dreamers, are not deported. So for, for her now to just simply reject out of hand when the president actually has said, OK, let's look at ways we can come closer, uh, you know, it shows you they're just not interested in negotiating. Should, why should the Democrats, though, accept something temporary? in exchange for something permanent, Well, look, in what fairness to them. What we're talking about is we have to secure the border and get the government open. And, you know, as, uh, as your last panel talked about, the Democrats in the Senate, including Senator Warner, have voted for 700 miles, actually, of, of a border barrier back in 2013. So um, we really want to come to an agreement here. The president really wants to come to an agreement here. He has put offers on the table. The responsible thing for the Democrats to do mm -hmm. is put a counteroffer on the table if you don't like this one. Yeah, Senator Warner seemed to suggest maybe there's a way to pay people. Pay some of these workers now, even if you don't open up the government, not miss another pay period. Would you support some sort of temporary solution like that this week just to keep things going? You know, the, the House Republicans actually voted to do just that, and the Democrats voted against it. We had a handful of Democrats who joined us on one of our motions to recommit that would do exactly that. Pay people we, even if the government that's stays right. closed. We think it's very important that people get paid. I don't think that it makes any sense. I, I think that it's very uh, hard to defend the notion that we're asking people to come to work and not be paid. But at the end of the day, there is a solution here. And the Democrats, you know, the, the, the rhetoric Rick here has really gotten above and beyond when the, the president's offer is rejected even before he stands up to give his speech. Uh, that tells you something about what their, what their approach is here. Did what the president offer, uh, is that how you would define amnesty? Is that a fair critique from the, some on the right are saying the president's offers are amnesty? No, it's not amnesty. What he said basically is, look, let's have an extension for three years of these two programs and let's do that so that we can come to the table to talk about what's necessary for broader immigration reform. It isn't amnesty and frankly it, it is a, a really important step forward. But again, I come back to the fact that Speaker Pelosi has said that she will be a champion of the Dreamers. And so when she's willing to uh, play games, when she's willing to pull political stunts, but she's not actually willing to come up with solutions, uh, that makes it very difficult to, to come to an agreement here. Finding a permanent solution for the dreamers with a path to citizenship, any form of that, when does that become an amnesty in your mind? Well, you know, look, we will have to see what happens. Uh, we've got to get the government open. We've got to focus on uh, what comes next. But at this point, the but most But what I described thing, is not a... You don't think that's, a, that's amnesty, right? If you have to have a path to citizenship? What the president has put forward mm -hmm. is not amnesty. What the president has done is say, absolutely, our first and most important obligation is to secure the border. And the fact that the Democrats are talking about, let's have open borders, let's abolish ICE. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they say they're for border security on some level, yet they're not even willing to, as Speaker Pelosi said, provide one dollar for it. It is a purely partisan game she's playing, and she ought to stop it for the good of the nation. All right, let me move to some uh, foreign policy issues. Here was the president yesterday on the White House South Lawn talking about uh, the potential withdrawal of troops in Syria. Take a listen. In two years, we've, I guess, reduced it to about 99 percent of the territorial caliphate. We're killing ISIS. For Russia, for Iran, for Syria, for Iraq, for a lot of other places. At some point, you want to bring our people back home. I know you have met, uh, you've been to the White House to talk about your concerns about uh, a, a too quick of a pull out there. Does that, 
uh, make you feel better, or does that sound like a president that still wants to move a little faster on this pullout than you do? Look, I think what's very important to recognize is that we have to make sure that we finish the job. And if you look at the mistakes... So 99% that, in your mind is not finishing the job. It's not. If you look at the mistakes that Barack Obama made uh, when he pulled out of Iraq precipitously, when he declared the war ended, uh, and the war certainly wasn't ended, and we end up with chaos in the aftermath. In a place like Syria, what our special operations forces are doing there uh, is crucially important in order to be able to provide air support, some artillery support. We've got to ensure that ISIS is destroyed, because if you walk away before they're destroyed, then they have the ability to create safe havens to launch attacks against us again. But you know what some will say? There's always an ISIS. There's always an Al-Qaeda. They're just going to change their name. So it means we're always going to be there. What do you say to folks that think that no matter how, that your definition means we're always going to have troops in the Middle East? We have to fight them there so they don't fight us here. And the definition of victory in the Middle East, the definition of victory in Afghanistan, in Syria, uh, is that we don't have another 9-11. So we've got to recognize that the kind of enemy that we're facing can, with very little territory, very little resources, uh, have bases from which they can plot and plan and launch attacks. And we have an obligation to make sure they don't do that. Before I let you go, uh, Congressman Steve King basically has decided you're the reason why um, he's being uh, maybe shoved out of office, shoved out of the party. I got to play something he said about you earlier this week. Take a listen. You can't put her in the category of ever being a conservative again. She's called for my resignation. She's been here two years. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, how, how, what, what would give her the moral authority or the intellectual judgment to do something like that? I'll just get you a chance to respond. If you well, like. look, I, I think I was pretty clear, and I, our entire House leadership was very clear uh, last week. His uh, comments were uh, abhorrent. They were racist. Uh, we, uh, uh, under the guidance of Leader McCarthy, uh, stripped him from, of his committee assignments. Uh, and I think there's simply no place for that language uh, in any of our national Center discourse. next. Look, I, uh, I, as I said last week, I think you ought to go find another line of work. All right, Liz Cheney, uh, number three in the House Republican leadership. Thanks for coming on and sharing your views. Thank Much you, Chuck. It. Good to be with you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.